The Law of Mind in Action by Fenwick L. Holmes How to Use the Law The Silence The best results are to be secured by using the law so far as we know it while at the same time looking for more light. The student who approaches this subject for the first time has as yet little to work on, for he has not tested out the law by science and experience. But enough has been said to make us realize that the object of a treatment is to impress our desire on the creative law with sufficient force to register in the creative mind. If the law creates to us according to the thoughts we think into mind, then what we must do is to raise our consciousness to the highest pitch of expectancy so that the best possible results may be secured. Accordingly, we must realize that the first thing for us to do in a treatment is to impress our own mind with a feeling that we are about to act upon the law and that it is about to act for us. The right atmosphere for treatment, therefore, is that of high faith, so that we will do well to bring ourselves up to the proper pitch of expectancy by some preliminary reading. Take the Bible and read the precious promises in it. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. They that trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. According to your faith, be it done unto you. Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. When ye pray, believe that ye have received, and ye shall receive. Go over such passages as will help you to strong faith. Learn some of the best ones. One should memorize something daily, a verse, a stanza of poetry, a statement of truth. Everybody should know the 23rd and the 91st Psalm and be able to repeat it at such times as needed to strengthen confidence. It will also be of great help to read for a few minutes or longer in some helpful book of truth. The student may well read Creative Mind or Being and Becoming. The purpose of this book is, of course, to furnish both instruction and inspiration. After reading the lesson for the day, you'll find the truth more keenly. Having prepared yourself in faith and knowledge, the course of your thought might well run along the line of the law, much like this. I know that I am surrounded by the finer forces of spirit. I know that I myself am a centre of conscious activity in this great ocean of divine mind. I know that my word has become the word of truth and a model of creation for the creative mind for the good I desire. Go on mentally meditating along these lines so long as you feel the interest or need. If necessary, overcome any feeling that may arise of fear or uncertainty. Rid yourself of any sense of sin or fault. If you feel that you have done wrong in any way, seek to right it so that you may have a clear consciousness. If, therefore, 
Thou art offering thy gift at the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother has aught against thee. Leave thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. These are the words of the master metaphysician, and reveal the necessity of no counter-thought against that of pure faith. If necessary, forgive yourself for anything you have done that you feel to have been wrong. The Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. You are a Son of Man. If you have fear, get rid of it in the same way. Cast it out. There is nothing to fear. Pull out all the weeds of wrong thinking. Declare that evil or the thought of evil has no influence over you. Now, feel as deeply as you can that all is well with you and the world. Feel how good it is to know this freeing truth, to know that you are a child of God, to know that all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth, to know that greater work than these shall ye do because I go unto my Father. Then say, I am pure spirit living in a world of spirit and guarded by the great spirit of life. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I am now entered in spirit and in truth into the higher finer places where I am in contact with all that is. I would see and know the truth and feel it at this hour. As a child of the living God, I make my claim upon the law. Let this good, whatever this good is that you want, come to me. Say distinctly and with deep feeling just what you want of the law. You are not dictating to it, but if you do not know what you want, the law has nothing to work on. At the same time, what you are after is the idea of the thing, so you may be sure that the greater wisdom will give you only the thing that will be for your best good, but it will be the thing you want and will be along the line of which you are holding the faith attitude. Expect greatly and you will receive greatly. Be strong in your faith, so strong that you feel in your heart that it is now done unto you even as you think, and you can give thanks for it. Make known your request unto God with thanksgiving. In everything give thanks. Be grateful. For those who wish to develop spiritual perception which is the basis of the highest healing power, it is desirable to dwell on the thought of spirit as a living present breathing in and through us, vitally interested in all our affairs and identifying itself with all our highest purposes and aspirations. The desires we have are then recognized as those of spirit seeking its own self-expression the love we have is the love of spirit in us, and the life is but the individual manifestation of that larger life in which we share. The true silence is the quiet realization of spirit, which such intensity of feeling that we are merged in the great all and are one with the infinite mind. In this consciousness, we may secure the highest results by simply being still and knowing that the Father gives us all things even before we ask Him. Before they call, I will answer them. The Spirit knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask them. The final purpose of these lessons is nothing less than to bring up the consciousness of the seeker for truth, to the point where the demonstration is made by simply knowing in his heart that the good he seeks 
is his now simply because he has thought it. That is the way in which creative mind makes things and in the end that is the way we must secure them. We must know that our thoughts manifest as things. This will free us from all sense of struggle. This is the final peace of the soul and the great goal of individual life, to have the enjoyment of self-conscious existence and yet to rest in the infinite and eternal calm of the divine mind. Says Edward Roland Sill, "'Tis not in seeking, "'tis not in endless striving thy quest is found. Be still and listen. Be still and drink the quiet of all around. Not for thy crying, not for thy loud beseeching, will peace draw near. Rest with palms folded, rest with thine eyelids fallen. Lo, peace is here. Realization, I rise to the work and the life of the new day with strength and courage. I go forth with eagerness to my task. I go gladly, blithely on, for at the heart of me, God presses in to keep me fully supplied with all I need. I will not today lose conscious contact with the life of the Spirit in me. I shall know all day that, beneath me, are the girders of the Almighty, and beneath are the everlasting arms. Whatever comes to me cannot find me unprepared. If I need wisdom, I have it. If I need courage, I possess it. If I need strength, it is within. My inner life is one with God. From within me flow streams of living water. The spirit of truth shall teach me all things and guide me in the way of truth. I am held in infinite security. I have the wonderful poise and strength of one who is conscious of his inner source of strength. Men who see me today shall wonder at my outbreathing force and magnetic power, but I shall know that it is because the strength of the infinite is in me. So be it. <laughs>